Hey friends, it's Jessica and Benji from Three Rivers Homestead and let's see what we were able to accomplish in the kitchen this week. Today we are making some sauerkraut from this beautiful cabbage. First step is to get it all chopped up. So we're slicing it and then Levi has gotten started for me. He's just beating our sauerkraut. We're trying to release all the juices. So we use this um, meat tenderizer and just kind of pound at it and use our fingers. We'll just keep going. You want to help too, John John? Yeah. Oh, I've got so much help. Nope, it's not ready yet. Let me cut the rest of that. All chopped up. I saved a couple leaves over here and I'll show you why we do that here in a minute. But now we need to pour in some salt. We're gonna salt it so that it tastes like seawater. Why don't you go ahead, Levi, and pour some in. Keep going, need quite a bit. Okay, we're gonna stop there and we're gonna pound it down. Keep pounding and then we'll taste it here in a little bit. If it tastes kind of like seawater, we'll uh, be satisfied. If it doesn't, we'll add a little more. What do you think, guys? Yeah. Good? Yeah. Okay, keep going. Is that fun, John John? You're pretty good at that. Okay, you'll have to taste it now, Levi. Let me know what you think. How does it taste? All right, do you think we need to add some more salt? Let me try it here. Mm, a little more salt. What do you think, buddy? You think you can do it? Yeah. Put some more in there. That's good. Ooh, ooh, might be too much. <laughs> All right, let's keep going. Getting all those juices out. It's getting close, buddy. We are getting close. While they're working on that, I actually stopped at a farm stand today and got a bushel of these Roma tomatoes. Um, I didn't make a bunch of sauce this year. Oh, are you showing us? They're beautiful, aren't they? Yeah, Roma tomatoes. I used a lot of our tomatoes to make salsa and other things this year, and I wasn't gonna make a bunch of sauce because I have probably 20 to 25 quarts left over from last year, but um, something in me, ooh, those are nice. Something in me is saying that we might need, um, I don't know, with food shortages and everything, maybe it would be prudent to can some extra. So I went and bought an extra bushel here. And so that's going to be a job for tomorrow is turning these into sauce. You guys going to help me with that too? Yes. Yes. But we got to finish the sauerkraut. You guys gave up. Now you have to wash your hands because you touched the tomatoes. Go wash your hands before you do the sauerkraut again. Go to the bathroom and wash them. Thank you. You have to wash them again though because now you got them dirty touching the tomatoes. All right, so the boys did a great job. We've got a good brine going here in the sauerkraut, and now we're ready to pack our jars. So all I'm doing is just grabbing little bits of cabbage, and I'm taking a wooden spoon here, and I'm pushing it down as tightly as I can. And I don't know if you can see the juices are kind of rising above the level of the cabbage leaves, and that's what we want. So as I pack it in, I just continue to add a little bit like this, and then pack it down again, and we'll continue to do that until we get a whole jar full, and then I'll show you the next step. Okay, so as you can see, our jar is full, and I packed it down about as tightly as I can get it, but no matter how tightly you get it, there are going to be some little cabbage leaves that are going to float to the surface, and that is a problem when we go to ferment this. Anything at the surface is at risk of molding. Now, there are a couple ways to do this. There are gadgets you can buy that help kind of hold their little weights that can help hold the solids down and those are great. I don't own any, I just do it the old fashioned way. So I have these washed cabbage leaves that were from the um, cabbage that we cut up. And what I do is I kind of cut a piece of this leaf into a shape like this. And I'm just gonna put this in the jar over the top to kind of hold down the pieces that want to float to the top. And I'm gonna work this in and it's gonna serve sort of as like a lid <laughs> over the top of this, I guess. And once I get this in place, this piece of cabbage 
will help prevent anything on the top from molding. Everything should stay down below the water line and safely ferment that way. So I've got it in there pretty tightly. I don't know if you can see. It's pressed down there about as good as I can get it. And then what I'm gonna do is go in and any of these little pieces that kind of snuck around as I was doing that and floated to the top, I'm gonna remove them with the spoon here. Um, and then I'll show you the next step. All right, so I've gotten it about as good as I can get it. It's not perfect. A couple little pieces are gonna float to the top and that's fine because I'm gonna put this somewhere in my kitchen where I'm gonna keep an eye on this. And just every day as I check on it, if there's anything at the top that kind of looks like it's above the surface of the water, I'll just fix that and it's no problem. What I'm going to do is use one of these little fermentation lids and I'm going to put this on the top. First thing I want to do is take a clean towel and just not only clean the top here, wipe it off, but make sure there aren't any little pieces of cabbage that stuck to the inside rim of the jar because those two can mold. So once I know that it's all clean, I'm going to go ahead and put my lid on here and tighten it up and it's ready to go. So what I'm gonna do is set this somewhere in the kitchen where I can keep an eye on it and I'll just look every day, make sure you know there's no issues with anything, you know, molding or anything like that on the top. And I'll probably let it go about a week and then I'll check on it and taste it and see how it tastes. Um, and then after that, you just check every day until you get it to the taste that you like it. Once it's done fermenting and it's at the taste that I like, I'll remove this lid I'll put a solid lid on it and I'll keep it in the fridge and that will store in the fridge for a really long time. That will get us through winter. So I just did one little jar today um, just because I had this cabbage to use up. But here once we harvest a bunch of cabbage um, in the fall, I will make several more jars of this, put this in the fridge and that will be our sauerkraut for winter. So One jar down, several more to go. One last thing about the sauerkraut, I just wanted to mention that I taught myself how to do all of this using this Nourishing Traditions cookbook. This is a wonderful resource. I was um, gifted this, I believe, probably 12 or 13 years ago when I began attending some Weston Price meetings, and this was just life-changing for me. It taught me everything I needed to know about uh, traditional cooking and health benefits of things like soaking and fermentation and everything like that. So. This book has instructions for things like how to make your own sourdough starter, how to make things like sauerkraut and other ferments, um, why you need to soak your greens and things like that. So if you want to learn more about things like sauerkraut, I highly suggest this resource. I'll put it in the description below. This is sort of like the, the book for, for kitchen skills. It's a great place to start to learn everything you need to learn. And then they also make a Nourishing Traditions book that's all about broth that we that we own here. And it's wonderful. There's one all about babies and baby care. Um, just make sure you get yourself one if you want to learn more. It's Tuesday evening and I decided to get a head start on tomorrow's um, canning. I got about a quarter of a bushel of these Roma tomatoes just kind of sliced in half. And there's a little bit of water in the bottom of this crock pot just to prevent sticking. And then we're going to stick these in the crock pot on low and let them cook down over tonight. Uh, if you notice, I still have the peels on these. Tomorrow, after they cook down, I'll run them through the food mill and we'll uh, remove the peels then. And then I also am getting a head start on breakfast for tomorrow. Tomorrow morning, the kids wanted pancakes, so we're going to do soaked oatmeal pancakes. The night before, I always put four cups of oats three cups of flour and four cups of water into a bowl and mix it up like this. And then I'll just put a lid on top of this and let it sit overnight. And then tomorrow morning I'll add the rest of these ingredients. And this is a nice healthy pancake with the soaked grains and it's always a hit around here. So that's it for today. I'm closing up the kitchen and we're gonna rest now. The next morning, and I'm working on flipping pancakes nice and early with my guys here. Good morning, guys. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> and as you can see, these have been simmering overnight. We'll get those here. Once I get breakfast cleaned up, we'll get these on the stove, all milled through and cooking down a little faster. Is it good? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's pretty good. Good. I always like it when I just have a couple buddies down here at a time eating pancakes so I can flip a couple. When they're all down here at once, I gotta get them all done really quickly. So these guys are eating first and then the next set will come down here in a little bit. 
It's nice to just chat over our tea in the morning, isn't it, Gabe? Mm-hmm. Gabe's my buddy who on the weekends will, he'll make me I'm tea. I'm you buddy too. You're my buddy too, that's right, John John. Gabe will bring me tea in the morning on the weekends and we sit and chat and read the news together. It's a nice time. So I always enjoy my tea time with my biggest buddy. All right, guys, enjoy your pancakes. Got another buddy. Good morning, Gracie. Morning. Your baby over there. Hey, buddy. Hi. Hi Dad. Yeah? Good morning. <laughs> Just finished up lunch, and it's time now to do something with these tomatoes. So you can see how watery this is. They've cooked down quite a bit, uh, but we need to do more. So Elizabeth, who, she is always the first one to volunteer to use the mill, aren't you, sis? Yeah. Um, she is scooping some out and running it through the mill here. Tomatoes are much easier to work through the mill than things like apples or pears. It just pretty much goes through. Why don't you put a scoop in there, sis? So it's pretty watery, and then she'll just push it through, and the seeds and skins will be left behind. Now we could just can this as tomato juice, but what we're actually going to do is transfer this liquid to this pot, and we're going to cook this down and make it thicker today. Um, I like to can my tomato, tomato sauce. Let me show you over here. Hold on, I've got some noisy boys. Let's see what they're up to first. What are you boys doing in here, making so much noise? Reading? Are you fighting over books? No. Let's not fight. Let's be nice brothers, okay? Are you a shark? What are you reading? What are you reading? Oh, baby shark. Is there being sharks? Oh, all right. Well, I'm going to get back to my tomatoes. Ah, you're a scary shark. Okay, you guys finish your book. Oh, I almost fall there. <laughs> okay, so as I was saying, here's some of my jars that are left over from 2020. I like to can my sauce kind of watery. I don't cook it down so it's extremely thick. I like it kind of like this because it's more versatile that way. I can use them for chili like this, or if I want to use them for tomato sauce for something like spaghetti, I can just add a little tomato powder or paste or some zucchini powder, and it'll thicken it right up. So... This is kind of my ideal texture, um, so we're just gonna cook it down until it gets a little thicker like this. So what we're doing is the stuff that's left behind inside the mill, uh, we are putting into a container here, and this will be spread out on dehydrator trays to be turned into uh, tomato powder that will become tomato paste. So. If we don't get to putting this in the dehydrator soon and we want to wait, you can always freeze this stuff. Just put it in a gallon bag, freeze it, and then later on when you have a little time, you can thaw it and dehydrate it later. So no rush on that. All right, we'll get this done and then show you the next step. I always get asked about this every time I share it in a video. This is an old-fashioned food mill. This was given to me by an older friend who um, is past her canning years and didn't need it anymore, but it's what she had used her whole life, and so now we are using it. So I don't have a link for this exact model, but if you look online, just look for an old-fashioned food mill. Stores like Layman's sell them. Um, this is just a, a cheaper option to a you know an electric food mill, and it works just fine. These two boys were continuing to fight while they were reading books. So now they have been given a task where they have to work together to accomplish it. So they will stop fighting. What are you boys doing? Cleaning. Cleaning? Mm -hmm. You going to get it all clean for me? Yeah. You got a few more toys and things to pick up on the floor. All right. Yeah. All right. Nice work, Elizabeth. She got it all milled. And we're just going to transfer the rest to this pot. These are all of the skins that she milled out, and we're just going to save this and keep this in the fridge until we finish our other two batches. I just put another batch of tomatoes in the crock pot that was the same size as this, 
and then we're left with approximately, I'd say maybe a third of a bushel. So out of that one bushel of tomatoes, we're gonna get three batches just like this. And so we will wait until we have all three batches worth of skins to dehydrate them all at once. Um, all right, so what we're gonna do is pour this into here, get it on the stove, and this is gonna cook down for the next couple hours while the little boys take their naps, because they, they need a nap, don't they, sis? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Are they being a little ornery today? Yep, and they both need to have a nap. And they both need to have a nap? <laughs> Yep, everybody. I think all three little boys should take a nap today. The sauce has cooked down to the thickness that I like it. And so I've just added about a half a teaspoon of citric acid to the bottom of each of these jars. And then I'm going to top them off with my sauce. It's Friday morning and the kids are finishing up breakfast. I just pulled the last batch of tomatoes out of the crock pot and I'm going to work on stewing it down. So far this week we've done four quarts of sauce and then, what is this, seven pints. This last batch that I did was extremely thick, like nearly paste-like. So that is wonderful. This will be a good addition to the pantry. Got some beans soaking for dinner. We're going to make cornbread and beans tonight with a ham hock. Um, but my first order of business is to get this milled down and we're going to make taco sauce out of these tomatoes. What do you guys think? You like taco sauce? Yeah. Yep. No. All right, so I'll show you that process today. Beginnings of our taco sauce are all milled and simmering now. We have quite a busy day ahead of us, and so we'll get to this later this afternoon. I have all the skins and whatnot um, from what we milled out, and I'm just going to put them in a freezer bag for now and deal with them later because I don't have time today to get them in the dehydrator, and they'll be just fine. I'll freeze them, and then sometime a couple weeks from now when I'm not as busy, we'll get these all dehydrated and turned to powder. So we're ready to put this in the freezer, and then I'm just getting dinner started. As I mentioned, we got a busy day, so if I get dinner started now, it'll make the afternoon that much easier. This is just a ham hock. I soaked these uh, white navy beans overnight, and so they were all ready this morning. Um, I chopped up one onion, added some parsley and garlic salt, and then I'm just going to put this in the oven on um, a low temperature for the rest of the day, and that'll be a lovely dinner. I'll make some cornbread in a little bit to go with it. So. That's what we're having. My sauce has been cooking down all day and I got it to my desired thickness here. And so now I'm gonna tell you, I just added all my spices and forgot to film it. So let me go back and tell you what I added. So I'm taking the ball canning recipe here that uses tomato paste, water, and vinegar. But I am, instead of using tomato paste, using a really thick tomato sauce. And as long as there's the six cups of liquid, it's gonna turn out just fine. And then you can see all my seasonings here. Um, instead of corn syrup, I'm gonna use honey. And instead of adding the cider vinegar, I'm gonna add some citric acid to the jars. So let me show you what I added here. So I did two tablespoons of chili powder, um, one tablespoon of salt. I did, what did I do? One teaspoon of cayenne powder. And then I did a half a teaspoon of hot sauce. We have some homemade hot sauce we made this year, but we had this in the fridge to use up, so that's what I put in it. And then in place of the corn syrup, I did a half a cup of our homegrown honey. And so that is what I added to my taco sauce. Just added a fourth a teaspoon of citric acid to each jar. That'll take the place of the vinegar in the recipe and make sure that this is acidic enough. Now I just need to obviously clean my um, rims here and then get this in the canner. This will process for 30 minutes. Dinner's all done and it smells so good. We've got our uh, beans and ham over here and then we made some cornbread. We used blue corn and it is just looking delicious. So we're gonna go ahead and get this served up. And our taco sauce, obviously I forgot to put vinegar <laughs> in my pot to help with the mineral deposit again but our um, taco sauce is all canned up and all the jars sealed. So out of that bushel of tomatoes, I ended up with all of this right here, plus the skins that I'm gonna dehydrate into powder, and we'll get quite a bit of powder out of that. And there you have it. We had a wonderful week, um, several projects accomplished that needed to get done, and we're looking forward to the beginning of a, another great one. What do you think, Benji? Yeah. <laughs> okay. We hope your week is blessed and we look forward to seeing you again soon. Have a great one. Bye.